What's going on today, YouTube? I've got a video for you. But before I get to the video, I want to talk really quickly about something pertaining to this video, pertaining a little bit to the barbering industry especially, and a little bit of life, because there's a lesson in, in this as well. So for this haircut, we're doing a mullet. The client, I call him a client because he's been coming to me for a couple years. I haven't seen him in months. He grew his hair super long. And he's coming in, he was told he needed a haircut from his boss, and his boss happens to be his brother, so he wanted to mess around with him a little bit, so he thought, I think I want to do a mullet. It's the first time I'd ever cut his hair this short, it's the first time I'd ever seen his hair this long, so in the video, you'll see me jump around a little bit, and there's something to be hold about that as well, if you are new to the industry or thinking about getting in the industry. Some of the mistakes that I've seen are that barbers worry too much about what they're going to make today rather than focusing on the person that's in their chair. I'm not saying go be rude to the people that are on the bench waiting or anything like that, but you have to make sure that the final outcome of your customer's haircut is great, even if the process wasn't that great. Sometimes it's going to be like that. If you've never cut somebody's hair, you don't know what, how their hair is going to react to your clippers or your shears or any of that. You, you've never cut their hair. So you're going to want to take your time on that. Customers will very much appreciate that and they will more than likely come back. This is something that I've believed in. It's something I learned by observing other people who came into the industry and didn't last. Um, there was always a common theme with the reason that they didn't last in the industry. And a lot of it had to do with the fact that they were not focused on getting better. They were not focused on retaining customers. And uh, that's detrimental to you, especially in your first year or two. Because there is a busy season sometimes in some barbershops and there is a slow season. And yes, during the busy season... You might be getting a lot of business, but if you're not taking your time, those customers will not come back in the slow season. That when they do come back and they see that other guy who's been there longer and who they know is better than you, they're going to wait for him. It could put you in a tough position. So my point is, is in this video, you're going to see me jump around a little bit. The outcome was great because I followed these principles. I make sure that you leave my chair with as best a quality as possible, even if it means letting somebody on the bench know, hey, I'm running a little bit late. Um, I wasn't expecting uh, th his hair to be so long or to take this long. I apologize. Another mistake that I see is that people will give uh, a good first haircut and then not try to get better after that. So they'll come back a second time. And they'll be like, oh, you know, I remember that first haircut was great, but this one wasn't so great. And then they'll come back a third time. And if you do it again, they might not come back again and you'll lose them. So it's very important that you always remember the most important person is the person in your chair. So in this video, you're going to see me jump around a little bit. Like I said, I've never cut his hair like this. I've never cut it this short on the sides or this long on the top and back. However, the outcome is great. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the video. Stay to the end to see how this one turns out. I'll catch you at the end of the video. First thing you're going to want to do is section off the side you'll be working on first. Starting out, I'm using my shears to remove the bulk. With hair this thick, it's better to use your shears first to avoid any pulling that the clippers might cause. After I brought the hair down to a safe length, I'll start to remove the rest of the bulk using my three guard open, making sure I'm not cutting too high into the ridge line. For the sides, I decided to do a low skin fade. Here I'm using my trimmers and setting my first ball guideline. 
And he's still gonna find me Man, you know where to find me I'm trying to get me a Grammy So I can dedicate it to my granny Look, tell me what's the vibe now using my blade with the lever open, setting my next transition line, you want to follow that up with your one guard open, then your two guard open, spreading them both evenly going up about an inch. After I've set my transition lines, I'll switch to my detailers and work on softening that bottom line. Here I'm working my lever closed, then halfway, then open, using the corners of my blade and a flicking motion to tighten that first section. Working with my masters here, I'm three quarters of the way open and I'm starting to push back that second transition line and blend the fade a little bit more. Here with my zero guard halfway, working on spreading that fade a little bit more and erasing that second transition line completely. Whenever you're doing a fade for the first time, you might have to jump around a little bit. Here I took my zero guard off and I'm just going with the lever open and we're working on spreading the fade a little bit more. Working my way up on the taper, I have my zero guard open and I'm starting to spread and erase that third transition line. So for this haircut we decided to keep the bridge, we thought that would be a good look. Here I'm using my shears and I'm just trying to get that as tight as possible. With his hair it'll lay right down so luckily we don't have to worry about anything sticking out. In this case I'm using shear over comb and I'm just going to bring it as tight to the skin as possible without completely erasing the bridge. Here I'm just putting some final touches on the taper, going over my detail work one last time, and really making sure the bottom of that taper is completely bald.
Here I'm just working my way back down using my masters open, doing some extra detail work. After I finish the bridge part of the hair, I notice the fade could use a little touching up and tightening, so that's what I'm doing here. For that I like to use a scooping motion with my masters open and just erase any lines or dark spots and really pull the fade together. Now starting on the top and back, you're going to want to make sure the hair is fully saturated especially when it's this long and thick. Here I'm just removing about an inch of hair on the right side of the head. This will serve as my length guide for the rest of the haircut. Once I've removed about an inch, I'll start to even and texturize the hair using sheer over comb. Notice that I'm cutting with the grain and as I'm removing hair, my comb and shears are moving in the direction the hair flows. This is a trick I use that allows me to cut multiple sections evenly while layering the back of the hair.
With real thick hair like this, I'll finish the cutting process by running my texturizing shears through the hair, removing anything that might look heavy. I'll do this by using shear over comb and cutting with the grain. Once you finish cutting the hair, you're going to want to go ahead and blow dry it, especially after using texturizing shears. This will not only help remove excess hair, but you never want your customers to leave the shop with a wet head, especially if you live in a colder climate like myself. Now that we're done with that, we're ready for pomade and styling. For a haircut like this, your best bet is using a wide tooth comb or your fingers to give a nice layered appearance. So that's it for this video, I hope you got something out of this. Here is the final cut, this is exactly what we were going for, he was super pumped about the outcome. Obviously there's many renditions of a mullet, but for this one we were going for a more modern look and flow. If you have anything that you want to see next, drop a comment. If you're not a subscriber already, hit the subscribe button and help this channel grow. I am doing a 1000 subscriber giveaway where three people will be selected at random and will win something totally cool. No catch, just be a subscriber. Thanks for watching as always, catch you in the next one.